This is the Sea Wise Giant, the largest ship ever to sail. It was over 50 feet longer than the Empire State Building, making it a true marvel of modern engineering. But whatever led to the creation of such an enormous ship and what eventually happened to it? Due to the 1973 energy crisis, when Middle Eastern countries stopped exporting oil to nations that supported Israel during the Yom Kippur War, oil prices skyrocketed from $4 to nearly $12 a barrel. This led a Greek company to conceive the idea of the Sea Wise Giant in 1974. They aim to build a ship capable of transporting huge amounts of crude oil from the Middle East to refineries in a single journey, taking advantage of the rising oil demand. The ship was constructed by Sumitomo Heavy Industries in Yokosuka, Japan. Over five years, they built what became an engineering marvel, the Sea Wise Giant. At 1,498 feet long, Named Opama 1016, it was the longest ship ever built, nearly as wide as a football field at 255 feet and about 8 stories high with an 80-foot draft. Its most impressive feature was its capacity. As a tanker, it could carry a staggering 564,000 tons of dead weight and over 4.1 million barrels of crude oil enough to satisfy the daily fuel needs of over 7 million people. The Sea Wise Giant was powered by two massive Mitsubishi V2 M8 boilers and a single steam engine that produced just 50,000 horsepower. Despite its size, the ship was considered underpowered, but it featured some incredibly large machinery such as a 230-ton rudder and a propeller weighing over 50 tons and spanning more than 30 feet. However, the ship encountered issues during sea trials due to severe vibrations when moving backward, leading to the original owner to reject the purchase, which resulted in Sumitomo Heavy Industries losing a legal battle to enforce the sale. Nevertheless, Sea Wai Tung a shipping magnate from Hong Kong recognized the business opportunity amid high oil prices and purchased the vessel for his Orient Overseas Container Line shipping company. Upon acquisition, while still named 1016, he renamed it Sea Wise Giant, which played on the initials C and W, a naming style he favored for his ships. Despite its enormous size, Tung planned to enlarge the ship even further through a process known as jumboization. This unique maritime engineering method allows for enlarging a ship by cutting it in half and adding an extra section in the middle, which is simpler for large crude carriers like the Sea Wise Giant since their midsections are uniform. This method involves extensive welding and electrical work effectively stretching the ship by inserting a new section and rejoining the two halves. Why would a shipper expand the ship? It's all about increasing cargo capacity and profit. By using a process called jumboization, ships like the Sea Giant can add significant space, in this case, extending her length by about 10 feet to a total of 1,504 feet. This made her the longest and heaviest ship in history, but not without issues. Despite its size, the Sea Wise Giant had a relatively slow top speed of 16 knots, much slower than the typical 24 to 26 knots for other large tankers and cargo ships. This limited speed meant it couldn't travel quickly or respond swiftly in emergencies. Additionally, Due to its massive size, it took about 5 nautical miles for the ship to come to a complete stop from its cruising speed, compared to less than 1,000 feet for most US warships. The Sea Wise Giant also had a very wide turning radius of about 2 miles, posing a risk of collision with any nearby vessels when turning. Its draft of just over 80 feet, with a safety draft of 100 feet, made it impossible for the ship to safely navigate the English Channel. 
Its enormous size also meant it couldn't pass through the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal. Furthermore, only a few ports in the world can accommodate a ship of this size. In the US, only the New Orleans offshore oil terminal was capable of handling it. Due to these restrictions, the Seawise giant primarily transported crude oil between the Middle East and Asia. A tragic incident occurred during one of these trips in 1988. On May 4, 1988, the Seawise giant was anchored off the Iranian oil terminal at Larak Island. At that time, Larak Island was considered a neutral zone where countries not aligned in regional conflicts could buy oil from Iran and transport it internationally. Situated in the center of the Strait of Hormuz, Larak Island was far from the Iranian oil terminals previously targeted by devastating Iraqi air, missile, and sea attacks. However, that neutrality was shattered on that particular afternoon. Around 1.05 p.m. that day, the Iranian military issued an air raid alert over the radio. At that time, the Seawise giant was being used as an offshore oil barge, a common practice in regions with limited infrastructure for filling tanker vessels. It was in the process of refueling a large tank vessel called the Barcelona. Despite the air raid warning, it was not possible for the ships to immediately leave the area because they would have had to stop refueling, restart their boilers, and navigate away, a process that would take hours and could not be completed before the arrival of Iraqi warplanes. About 30 minutes after the warning, disaster struck when Iraqi fighter jets flew over the terminal and targeted the ships. The Seawise Giant and the Barcelona, unable to move, were easy targets. The Iraqi jets launched a barrage of exit missiles, resulting in the sinking of the Barcelona and severe fires on the Seawise Giant. Overall, two ships were sunk and five others were heavily damaged, with dozens of seafarers killed, injured, or missing. Despite being declared a total loss by her insurers at Lloyd's of London, the Seawise Giant's journey didn't end after surviving a third attack by Iraq during the war. The ship was sold to a Norwegian company, which had it towed to Malaysia to determine where it could be repaired. They eventually chose a shipyard in Singapore capable of handling such a massive vessel. The attack had caused extensive damage, igniting a massive fire that melted the superstructure and severely damaged the interior. The repairs involved installing nearly 32 kilometers of new piping and a new superstructure. By 1991, the ship was restored and renamed the Happy Giant, though it soon changed hands and names again when Norwegian magnate Jorgen Jar purchased her for $30 million, renaming her the Jar Viking. For the next 14 years, the Jar Viking resumed transporting vast quantities of crude oil between ports in Asia, the Middle East, and beyond. In 2004, after more than 20 years at sea, excluding repair time, the ship was sold to a company in Qatar and renamed the KNC Nevis. It served as a floating fuel barge, similar to its role during the Iran-Iraq War until 2009. After 30 years of service, the ship was sold for scrap, renamed Mont, and towed to India for dismantling. Today, only her anchor remains, which was salvaged by an anonymous donor and gifted to the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. Is it possible that a ship like the Seawise Giant could be built again? While there are still many ultra-large crude carriers, ULCCs in operation, their future isn't certain for several reasons. These ships consume a huge amount of energy, prompting some countries to enforce strict regulations on their construction and operation. Moreover, following major environmental incidents like the Exxon Valdez oil spill, the public has grown increasingly concerned about the environmental threats posed by such large vessels. However, the most significant reason why ships like the Seawise Giant may not be constructed again is due to practicality. Very few ports can accommodate such enormous ships, 
limiting the flexibility of shipping routes and port options. Despite being an engineering wonder, the Seawise Giant exemplifies that sometimes a ship can indeed be too big. What are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to keep posted. Check out Luxury Explore for more interesting topics such as this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.